So this is the gimbal that we use. And as you can see, there's these little attachment points where you can put a hot shoe mount. Got the microphone on one side, but I also needed a place for these wireless microphones. I had previously attached them here with just this little makeshift thing, but I was like, you know what? It's time to do it right. So I had this little dual hot shoe mount, and then I put the two wireless mics on there, and then it attaches to the hot shoe attachment on the gimbal right there. I could have done this earlier, but I didn't want it to get even more heavy and unwieldy than it already is. But it's just such a clean way to connect everything that I figured it might as well give it a shot. This is the DJI RS3, and I've been very happy with it. It's bigger and heavier than our last gimbal, but the fact that it automatically locks, as you saw earlier, is just such a great thing. They just released a mini version of this, that doesn't do the auto locking, and I'm not sure if I wanna go back to not auto locking. Although that pound lighter would be pretty nice. As you can see, my microphone is attached right here. So what microphone am I using right now? That would be the Sennheiser MKE 400. I've mentioned previously that the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus is one of the best microphones ever made. It's nearly indestructible, has a battery that lasts forever. It has an amazing wind filter. You see how this foam just pops off? The wind filter's the same way. Oh, that is so fantastic. This does a great job of cutting the wind noise and it has a low cut filter to even further improve the wind noise. In our Glacier episode, the wind was extremely powerful and we turned on the low cut filter plus this wind filter, you can barely even hear it. However, it does have a few problems. The first problem being, look how ginormous this thing is. Not only that, but do you see this eyepiece right here? You see how this cable juts so far past the eyepiece? that if you want to put your head up to the eyepiece, this bumps into your forehead. So you have to really just kind of get in there like this and it's not very comfortable. When I did all those videos in Japan in 2019, I had the predecessor to this mic, which I don't even know what happened to that. Did I give it to Andrew or something? Anyway, that one used a nine volt battery, which sucked. It had a really bad shock mount system that would always break, but it was much smaller and didn't have that eyepiece problem. Now I have never been a huge follower of the if it ain't broke, don't fix it, as much as I want to be a follower of that. But when it comes to this microphone, I have very largely stuck to that. However, technology marches on, new products come out, the Sennheiser MKE 400. Look how small this thing is. Not only that, but it has a built-in blimp. So you actually don't need the wind filter. It does come with one, and it gets credit for being the softest wind filter I've ever used. It's like petting a cat. <laughs> and so far at least, I actually think it sounds better than the Rode VideoMic Pro. But the interesting part about sound and video quality is that we are getting so far past the point of diminishing returns in technology that the only people who care about these things are the people who are actually producing stuff. The average viewer or consumer does not care at all about these slight improvements to sound and video quality. Past a certain point, they don't even know the difference. So for me, what matters way more is the usability of everything. This is a great mic. But if I'm gonna be out running and gunning vlogging, I don't want this humongous mic attached to my hip like this. I need to be able to move around and feel not self-conscious while I'm filming and also to not draw too much attention to myself if I'm filming in a place where I don't want any attention. Look at how much smaller profile this microphone is. First of all, it's almost flush with the eyepiece so I can put my face right up to it but also it's nice and small so that the whole package is just like nice and compact. When I'm doing those videos in Japan and other places, I have this camera attached to my belt like this. So I want it to be low profile. This is nice and low profile. This is much less so. And this still has some benefits in being just such an indestructible mic that I kind of feel like it does have that benefit, but it's so much bigger. Look how much bigger that is. So I decided I'm going to try out this microphone. I have another microphone that's arriving today. I'm gonna to try that one out as well and just see how the new options are because I'm always about perfecting the setup. Sometimes that works against me because I unnecessarily complicate my life by trying out new things and then they don't work and I'm like, why did I even bother trying this? But lots of times it works out to my advantage as well. So, I mean, when we first got a 4K camera, at that time, everybody was saying, oh, nobody needs 4K, what's 4K for? I'm like, can you not see the difference? At this point, we are past the point of diminishing returns. But the difference between 4K and 1080p, I feel like you can see that difference. 120 hertz and 60 hertz, you can see that difference. I can understand if you've never seen it before and you see it for the first time, you're like, oh, maybe I, I don't really see that much of a difference. But once you get used to the new thing, the old thing is gonna look like boo-boo. 
And maybe there's something to be said for don't introduce new things so that you're happy with what you have. That is definitely an element to consider. Anyway, oh my goodness, it feels so good to be able to get back home and stick to a routine. September, October, November, and December have been like four of the busiest months of my life. And I got COVID at some point, and I am currently sick after a bunch of travel. I got home and I was so excited to just like get back to work on my stuff, but I was like, oh, I got a bunch of bureaucratic stuff that I gotta take care of. As a freelancer, that is my biggest thorn in my side, is having to do all of the paperwork and just nagging things, and then you gotta get on customer support, and then you gotta like take care of this thing, and then you gotta file a form that you didn't even know existed. And you're just like, oh, why does, why does it have to be this way? Oh. And you know, today all of that stuff is still not done. Some of it is out of my hands, but I was like, no, I can't. I have to just work on the stuff that I actually, I have to work on the real work. Like when you have to do so much managerial stuff that isn't the actual real work, it gets infuriating. Anyways, we'll take care of it like we always do. It always gets done eventually. And I will eventually not be sick anymore and not have all of this congestion. On another note, this week is the last time you'll see me with long hair, probably for the rest of my life. Michael in Japan grew his hair out, and at some point he asked me, he said, when you had your hair grown, did it ever get in your face all the time and annoy you? And I was like, I don't really remember. I don't think so. My memory was just bad, because it gets in my face all the time. And the only solution is to tie it back. At one time, that was maybe worth it in my life. It is not worth it anymore. The nice, clean, short haircut that is made for doing stuff. That is the haircut for me. But I figured I'll do one more episode with long hair so that we can all have long hair together. Well, not Thomas. Thomas won't even be there for the next episode. But maybe we'll have him wear a wig in the shout outs. I think that'll still be good. And then after that, it's getting cut. It's gonna feel so good. Nothing like a simple, small lunch. You know, eating a bunch of cookies and cake and other Christmas treats, it is fun for a short while. And that is the reason that we do not have holidays every day of the year. <laughs> Normal and routine is so underrated. So underrated. Oh my goodness. Don't underestimate how amazing that is. And you know what we're watching today, right? The king of lunchtime video, Tom Scott. Show me what you got, Tom Scott. This right here is an old iPad that my dad has, and he is stubbornly holding on to it, but I don't blame him. When something works perfectly well and the only problem is the battery, like, it's just, it's, it's too much to just be like, I'm gonna get a new one, when you can get a battery replacement and it would work just like new. So I'm erasing that for him, new battery, and you got a perfectly working tablet. If this backup ever finishes. Okay, now I need to go to my mother's studio to go figure out what's wrong with the audio setup. Something's always wrong with that audio setup. The mixer that they used was always on the floor, so it always got so much dust in it. And it's always causing problems. So I cleaned that out, that was all good. Now there's other problems, so I gotta go check it out. And I thought while I'm at it, let me give this microphone a quick vlogging test. It has been a good while since I've gotten a chance to do any of that sort of vlogging, so.
Cliff Notes needed a really long TRS extension cable. There was some hum in the audio, and I was wondering, could I just use a really long run of balanced quarter inch TRS and then adapt that at the very end, and would that work? The answer is yes, it did but we actually don't need to do it at all anymore because people didn't want the direct feed of the audio. They wanted the ambient room noise. So if they want that, I need to make something different anyway. So we shall see. Let's take this iPad to my dad. And then hopefully by then that other microphone should have arrived and we can give that a little testy test. Okay, the iPad drop was successful. Check this out. Orion Choco Pie. I have not seen these since we lived in China in like 1996. They're not that good, <laughs> but they are choco pie. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Hey. Okay, the ECM B1M microphone. This is the other option. This is the priciest option and it is very expensive. Now, I did not realize that there is also an ECM B10. I ordered that as well to see if there's any difference. It is cheaper, so we will see. I forgot that this microphone existed because in many ways, this is the best microphone for my particular use case. First up, no wires necessary, very small. Wow, I like how small that is. A little bit tall, a little bit taller than I'd like actually. But um, yeah, let's try this out. First off, we've got the microphone set to auto right now. It is on the super cardioid pickup pattern. Look at that. That's well, very nice, See, but it's so tall. But it's not that much taller, I suppose. And with this mic, you can change the pickup pattern. So if I'm behind the microphone, typically it would sound like this where my voice is kind of bassy and it's kind of quiet, but we can switch it to the omnidirectional pickup pattern. And now it sounds really good because it's picking up sound from all directions, not just the front of the microphone. It's picking up from all sides. Now, my biggest worry with this microphone was that the shock mount would not be good enough. I am kind of... Can you hear that? I'm a little wary of what the shock mount would be like, but let's, under normal circumstances, it's probably fine, right? Walking around, I just don't want the walking noise in there. Okay, well this is gonna require a bit more using these mics and then seeing how they go because the handling noise of this is not very confidence inspiring but I love that you can change the pickup pattern. I like how small it is. It's a bit taller than I would like, but this seems to have a lot of advantages. The form factor of this is great. I think this sounds the best of any mic I've used so far. Hmm. Yeah, anyways, we'll test these out. Uh, we'll see how they do. Let me know if uh, they sounded different to you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Second advantage is that this has, second advantage is that th with this mic, 